In today's adventure story, Freddy, FM and their sister Rija look for more fantasticals. Freddy creates the supernatural action search squad and they meet their uncle Ernst. Are you ready to find out what's going to happen? All right, let's get reading. Chapter one, monsters attack. Freddy von Frankenstein stood bold and brave. Even though he was surrounded by terrifying monsters, it was the most thrilling and chilling moment of his young life. Fortunately, his big brother and best friend, FM, was by his side. And his brother was Frankenstein's monster, perhaps the most powerful monster of all. The brothers stood back to back, ready to take them all on. A creepy mummy wrapped in rotting bandages stumbled toward them. A swamp creature dripping with grimy goop rose out of some ooze. A chupacabra flashed its razor sharp teeth at them. The magical yaksha named Uday that Freddy and FM had defeated weeks ago was there too. Worse yet, the giant jetty from their first fantastical encounter was also there, roaring with hunger. And watch out for that little guy too, Freddy warned, pointing out a tiny man with a red head and big beard. Ha! laughed Freddy's father, Victor von Frankenstein. Gnomes aren't scary, Freddy's sister Rija asked. What's a gnome? Hey, I'm trying to give a presentation here, Freddy complained in frustration. All supernatural creatures can be threats. Freddy pointed at pictures of all the monsters projected on the wall of Victor's laboratory. Victor turned on the lights and turned off the projector. Gnomes are friendly little forest creatures, Rija. It seems that Freddy ran out of ideas for scary monsters. Well, you get the idea, Freddy shot back. Now can I explain my plan? Victor sighed and said, you only have a few minutes. I'm in the middle of a delicate experiment with my mega magnetometer. The magnetic ray charge is almost too big. Freddy's dad was maybe the smartest scientist in the world. His lab was full of amazing inventions he was always testing out. Freddy rushed through his speech as fast as he could. Well, we've already had two monsters show up on the mountain, a Yeti and a Yaksha. And Rija too. She turns into a tiger after all, added FM. Rija too, Freddy agreed. That's three fantasticals in just a few weeks which means more are sure to show up. Rija mentioned that something drew her here to our mountain. If she's right, then there could be other fantasticals on their way right now. So I want to create a team as an extra credit project. FM and I will go on patrol to find any that wind up here. We're the supernatural action search squad. Freddy eagerly looked at everyone to see what they thought of his idea. Chapter 2. The Supernatural Action Search Squad FM got a big grin and jumped up and down. I love meeting new monsters! But Rija frowned, because it seemed like Freddy thought these fantasticals were all trouble. Victor thought for a bit and said, I know you're a little scared of fantasticals. Freddy protested, I'm not scared! FM and Rija smiled at each other, because they knew Freddy was more afraid than he would admit. Victor continued, but this doesn't really sound like schoolwork to me. And since I'm in charge of your homeschooling, I don't think this is how you should spend your time. You're always coming up with extra credit projects like this instead of doing your actual homework. Freddy pouted and started to protest, but Victor added, I'm so busy in my lab these days I can't always be interrupted with these crazy extra credit plans of yours. I'm beginning to think we should put you in school down in the village. Oh no, not regular school down in the town at the bottom of the mountain, thought Freddy. That wouldn't be fun at all. Freddy quickly changed the subject back to his plan to avoid that idea. I've got the squat project all figured out though. 
Freddy unveiled a secret handshake to everyone, which was way too complicated. FM messed up and laughed at himself. Even Freddy lost track of some of the steps and got frustrated. Making Rija giggle, Victor was unimpressed. And I've already made special tech for our search, Freddy continued. Check out our team badges. Freddy tried to show one off, but the badge zoomed out of his hand across the room and clanked onto FM's forehead. FM tried to look up at the badge, confused. Victor laughed. Oops, guess my magnetic ray charge must be too strong because that badge attached to the metal plate in his head. Risha stifled another laugh. This presentation was not going quite how Freddy had hoped. So far, I'm not seeing anything that involves homework, warned Victor. Well, then you're gonna love this, Freddy boasted. Check out our upgraded high-tech wrist communicators. So, how is any of this really going to help track fantasticals? Rija asked. Freddy rolled his eyes. I can't believe you don't know the kinds of things that super secret clubs need. Rija looked confused. But you just told us about it. How can it be a secret? Freddy paused and thought. Uh, well, because, huh. Well, here's a risk communicator of your own, he said, changing the subject. Yeah, try it on, FM said. This one is too small for my wrists. Rija was dazzled. Wow, thanks, Freddy. Freddy, continuing with his presentation, proudly announced. Finally, best of all, I've built a long-distance motion sensor. If someone shows up on the mountain, we can check out if they are a fantastical. Victor nodded his head and admitted, well... An invention like that actually sounds worthy of some extra credit. All right, you win. Go test it out. If it works, we can make this an extra credit assignment. Yay, shouted Freddy. But only if your brother goes with you, warned Victor. And I'm serious about you doing all your regular homework too. If you can't keep up with all of it, we might need to put you in a real school. I'd better get out of here before Dad talks any more about school, thought Freddy. So he quickly pushed FM out of the lab. Gotta go test out my sensor tech, he said while rushing out of the house. Victor turned to Rija and asked, Could you please keep an eye on them too? You're the oldest, and with the sun setting, your tiger powers and cool head will come in handy. Rija felt proud that Victor trusted her. She nodded and ran out to follow her new brothers. Chapter 3. Sneaky Surprises Zoom! Freddy and FM patrolled the mountain on their supercycle. The mountain they lived on was so high in the Himalayas that there was snow on it much of the year. And it was especially icy and windy today. Freddy loved riding around on the jet-powered vehicle he invented. FM, who was afraid of high speeds, moaned and held on tight. Freddy yelled, Okay, turn on the motion sensor to see if it can find anyone on the mountain. FM pulled the device out of Freddy's tech backpack and flipped the switch. Ding! The sensor immediately found something. The motion was found climbing up the steep, rocky backside of the mountain. Freddy was super excited his device worked. What if it's some human mountain climbers, worried FM. He had always been afraid of humans, ever since they didn't accept him when Victor created him. People never climb up that side of the mountain. They come up the front side, where it's easier. So that means it must be someone up to no good. What human would choose to sneak up such a difficult way, Freddy thought. It must be a monster. Looks like... The SASS has its first case, shouted Freddy. He sped down to investigate. Meanwhile, Rija struggled to keep up with them. Freddy was driving so fast that they disappeared from her view. But the sun started to set and she was finally able to turn into her tiger form. Her weird cat curse gave her amazing tiger powers. And one of those powers allowed her to run very fast.
Aha! I'll be able to catch up to them now and make sure they don't get into trouble, said Rija. To track them, she listened with her amazing cat ears for the sound of the supercycle. But she also could hear another unfamiliar sound directly down the mountain. Hmm, that sounds like an animal in pain, thought Rija. What should I do? Check on Freddy and FM or help the creature? Rija kept running until she could see the supercycle come into view. She could also see what they were driving toward. That just looks like a human climbing up the slope. I'll bet FM can easily protect Freddy from the climber if he needs to, thought Rija. If I run like the wind, I can help the animal and then quickly join the boys in no time. As she raced down the mountain, Rija approached the edge of town and the sound grew louder. There she could see what looked like a horse, its hoof trapped in a fence. Oh no, that fence belongs to the school. The children are playing in the schoolyard after classes, thought Rija. If they see me, they'll be scared of a tiger. I'm going to have to be super quick. As the horse struggled to get free, Rija noticed a glint in the moonlight. She could see a beautiful horn on its head. A unicorn? It is another fantastical. Freddy was right. Well, about me being right that fantasticals are drawn to this mountain. Rija ran even faster to get to the scared unicorn. Halfway up the mountain, Freddy and FM drove up to the mountain climber. Vroom! The supercycle roared to a stop, startling the man. The stranger shouted as he started to slide back down the ice. Both brothers were disappointed, but for different reasons. Oh, bummer. The SASS was supposed to find a monster, thought Freddy. Oh, no, said FM. It's just a man. FM hoped the stranger wasn't shouting because he feared him. Well... We'd better help him before he falls down the mountain, said Freddy. Freddy grabbed an invention in his backpack with a robotic arm and grappling hook. The hook caught the man just as he was about to slide off the cliff. I'll pull him up, said FM, using his monster strength to pull the man to safety. The stranger looked shocked to come face to face with the hawking FM, but to their surprise, he smiled and held out his hand. I've waited nine years to meet you, the stranger said. He took off his hood and goggles, and both FM and Freddy looked at each other in shock. The stranger looked exactly like their dad. Chapter 4 Uncle Ernst The man turned to a white-eyed Freddy and said, Hello, Freddy. I'm your Uncle Ernst. Freddy thought, Wow, he looks just like Dad, except his mustache is skinny and curly. Freddy yelped with joy to meet new family. Even FM was happy to meet a not scary human. You boys sure did save me. What a great way to finally meet my brave, adventurous nephews, said Ernst. Their uncle gave them a wide grin. So, why are you here? How come we've never met you before? Are you a scientist like my dad? Does dad know you're here? Do you have kids? Tell me everything, pleaded Freddy. Ernst kept grinning silently through Freddy's rapid-fire questions and said, It seems your father hasn't told you much about me. We're going to take you home to Dad, FM shouted. I'm sure he'll be thrilled to see you. Let's go. And with that, FM threw Ernst over his shoulder like a doll. Hey, wait. I can get there on my own, Ernst objected. No way, answered FM. You nearly fell down that cliff. Freddy will drive you there in our supercycle and I can run behind. FM firmly dropped him in the seat and buckled him in. Then Freddy zoomed up the mountain at turbo speed to the Frankenstein family's palace of the high winds. Uncle Ernst looked very nervous. Freddy reassured him. Relax, Uncle. We're almost there. But as they arrived at the palace, 
they got a distress signal on Freddy's wrist communicator. Beep, beep, bop. It's from Rija, Freddy shouted back to FM as he braked. FM leapt up to Freddy and Uncle Ernst. We've got a helper, he said. Freddy pressed a button on his communicator. Can you hear me, Rija? Yes, I can hear you, Freddy. Wow, this communicator is pretty cool. A proud Freddy smirked and said, I told you so. FM could almost hear Rija roll her eyes at Freddy. I'm here at the base of the mountain near the school. I need your help. Darn, thought Freddy. I want to see Dad and Uncle Ernst reunited, but Rija needs our help. Ernst hopped out of the supercycle. It sounds like you boys have an important rescue mission. Don't worry, I can show myself in and surprise Victor. I'm so excited to see him after nine long years. How sad that they have been apart for so long, FM said to Freddy. Yeah, that's exactly why I shouldn't attend that school. You'd miss me too much. We should be together every day, said Freddy. Well, you guys go help whoever this Rija is and shoot them away. I'm sure I can find my brother in his laboratory. Which way to the lab? Freddy pointed him in the right direction. And as Ernst started hiking up, FM saw a smirk on Ernst's face that seemed a little creepy. Vroom! FM yelped as the supercycle lurched forward and back down the mountain. Chapter 5 to rescue a unicorn. Freddy and FM found Rija in her tiger form with a large creature whimpering behind her. Is, is that a unicorn? asked the giddy FM. Another creature, Freddy thought. I knew there would be one. I told you so. I knew the mountain is attracting fantasticals. Rija sighed and reminded him. Um, it was me who told you about the mountain's power. The unicorn moaned sadly as it frantically tried to get free. Shh, we're gonna help you, said Rija gently. But every time her claws got near the fence to free the unicorn's hoof, it would cry out with fear. I think your claws are making it nervous, said FM. Maybe I can try to get it out with my super strength. FM was excited to help yet another nice monster. But as he gripped the fence, he heard children start to come out of the schoolyard nearby. Oh no, I'm scared those kids will see me, or maybe even scare the unicorn more, said FM. However, he didn't know they'd already been discovered. Not far away, a girl was watching them from high up in a tree. The girl stared with wonder at the sight of a tiger, a unicorn, and a giant monster. Just then, FM saw her in the trees, looking at him. Ah! A human saw me, he yelled with fear. The shouting only made the situation even worse, causing the unicorn to thrash around. The unicorn is moving too much to rescue it, Rija said. We have to help it calm down. Wait, I've got an idea, declared Freddy. He ducked through his backpack and pulled out a bunch of wires and metal parts. What's he doing? Rija asked FM, just watch. After a frantic minute, Freddy held up a weird looking machine with a big antenna and lots of dials. It's a moonlight powered radio device. This will send radio waves of music to calm the unicorn. We just need a speaker to play the music. Where are we gonna get one of those? Asked FM, scratching his head. Freddy grinned and pointed dramatically at FM. You're the speaker, big brother. Rija and FM looked at each other, equally confused. Freddy turned a knob. I'm sending the signal to the metal plate in your head right now. Just open your mouth. FM could feel a funny buzzing in his head, and so he opened his mouth, and music came out. I turned FM into an FM radio, Freddy said proudly. FM started dancing to the rhythm, somewhat clumsily. Rija laughed and joined in, and the girl in the tree also giggled and swayed to the music. It's working, whispered Rija. The unicorn is starting to calm down. 
Fanny grinned. Rija gently approached the unicorn, still distracted by the music, and tore the fence open. Then the unicorn carefully pulled out its hoof. Working together, the three of them had rescued the Fantastical. Chapter 6 Sleepy Sparkles The freed unicorn reared up with joy. Freddy turned off his radio device, but FM kept dancing until he realized there was no more music. He blushed, but was happy to have helped a nice Fantastical. He suddenly remembered the girl in the tree and saw that she was smiling too. Rija looked up at the unicorn and said, The SASS did an amazing thing today. The unicorn was so happy to be free that sparkles started to swirl out of its horn. Uh-oh, those had better not be magic sparkles. Magic messes up everything, said Freddy. Rija frowned at Freddy and said, Well, I'm magic and I was good at fixing things today. The sparkles swirled faster and in every direction. Freddy really started to worry, but then said, I feel sleepy. Oh no, the magic. His eyelids started to feel heavy and he lay down. Huh, that's strange, Rija said with concern. The unicorn saw how worried Rija was and stopped making sparkles, but it was too late. They had spread far and wide. Even the school kids were falling asleep. FM started to feel tired too. Even at his giant size, the magic was affecting him. Rija, you have to tell Dad, quick! He wanted to lie down, but first looked up for the girl in the tree. She had fallen asleep and was starting to fall off a branch. Gotta save the girl, said a sleepy FM. He used his last bit of energy to launch forward. He caught it just in time, then fell asleep right after, snoring softly as the girl slept right next to him. Rija sent a signal for help to Victor. The magic was spreading farther and farther. She climbed up the fence to check on the school kids. Why hasn't the magic worked on me? Maybe because I have magic powers too, thought Rija. The sparkles must have put the whole town to sleep. Everyone but me. Victor's voice rang out from her wrist communicator. Rija, are you there? Are you guys okay? She had to admit Freddy's invention was handier than she had thought. I'm here, but Freddy and FM have fallen asleep from unicorn magic. Unicorn magic? Rija, I can track your location using your wrist communicator. Stay right there and I'll come to you. Victor grabbed one of his flotation bubbles and a control device. He quickly opened the roof to his lap and hopped in the bubble to float down the mountain. But Victor never saw his brother Ernst waiting right outside the lab to sneak in. Watching Victor float away, Ernst snuck into the lab and marveled at all the inventions. Hee hee! Ernst giggled. I didn't even have to trick him out of the lab. Now I can steal all these amazing inventions and make myself a fortune. He'll never even know it was me. Ernst started grabbing all the devices he could hold, but all the clanking noises he made alerted Igor, the Frankenstein's pet monkey. The curious monkey ran to Victor's wife, Sean, who was out in the courtyard and pulled on her sleeve. What's gotten into you, Igor? asked Shan. Eep, eep, Igor squeaked and pointed to the lab. Something's wrong in the lab? I thought Victor was in there. Let's go investigate. Ernst could hear them coming toward them. Drat, I've gotten too far to be caught now. Ernst pressed all the buttons he could find on the wall. One button slammed the door shut before Shan and Igor could even see him. Victor? We're locked out. It's me. Let me in, shouted Shan. Unless that's not Victor in there. Igor shook his head. Igor, I have a bad feeling about this. Chapter 7. Unicorn Licks and Dirty Tricks Rija watched over her sleeping brothers. The unicorn stayed nearby, looking at her, no longer afraid of her. You're free. You can go now, said Rija. Don't worry about me. I'll be okay. 
but the unicorn was limping from its injured leg. Rija said, Hold on, friend. I'm sure Victor will be here any minute, and he will know what to do about your leg, about Freddy and FM, and about everyone else. Rija started to cry. I promised Victor I'd look after them, and now I can't help them. Victor's voice rang out. I'm here! But Rija couldn't see him. Look up, Rija! There he was, floating down in one of his orange bubbles. Victor guided it with the controller and down to Rija. And it popped as he landed. Rija ran over and gave him a big hug. Victor hugged her back and dried her tears. I'm so sorry I couldn't protect the boys like I promised, Rija said. Victor smiled warmly. What do you think you're doing right now? You called me for help and stayed with them. That's the best thing to do in an emergency. I'm so proud of you. Rija smiled and calmed down. I'm here now and we will figure this out together. Now tell me everything that happened. Rija talked as fast as she could. She told the whole story about the unicorn being trapped, about Freddy and FM and her working together to free it, and about the magical sparkles that put everyone but her to sleep. Victor said, Well, the sparkles seem to be gone. Since they haven't put me to sleep, I think this will be over soon. Victor used a scanner to check the brain waves and heartbeats of Freddy, FM, and the girl from the tree. They started to move. They're waking up, Victor announced. Rija looked over the fence and could see the children stirring too, some of them in funny positions, or with drool all over their face, or with leaves in their hair. But they were all just fine and safe. Just then, the girl on FM's shoulder woke up. Uh-oh, thought Rija. FM's not going to like this. But the girl was delighted to see FM and shook him awake. He was startled to have a human girl in his face. Victor said, you're okay, FM, and apparently you've made a new friend. FM's eyes were still as big as soccer balls to see a human that wasn't Freddy so close. Thank you for catching me, she said, and shyly gave FM a big hug before running back into town. FM sat in shock for a few moments until he snapped out of it. Hey, is Freddy okay? Yes, said Rija, pointing at Victor. Dad says he'll wake up soon. Victor stopped and smiled to himself. This was the first time Rija had called him Dad. The unicorn limped over and tried to help by licking Freddy's face. Freddy awoke to his own drool on one side of his face and unicorn spit on the other. He shut up and shouted, Shoo! A fantastical has messed things up for me again, thought Freddy and embarrassed me too. The whole reason for the supernatural action search squad was to keep Fantasticals from ruining everything, Freddy complained. Ah, the unicorn magic only put us to sleep for a little bit, said FM. It was just so happy to be free. And look, we're all fine. I think it's awesome that we've helped another Fantastical in trouble. The SASS should help Fantasticals who find their way to this mountain. I have to agree, said Victor. That's a good cause and worth a lot of extra credit points. Freddy was thrilled to hear that. That means he can go on adventures for homework, thought Freddy. Awesome! Then Victor added, but it's late and we should help the unicorn's leg before humans find it. Let's go home, kids. I'm very proud of what you did today. Rija said, I can hear parents coming to look for their kids. We'd better work fast. They all worked together to brace the unicorn's leg. Freddy ripped off a panel to fashion a sled and they used the super cycle to pull it back to the palace. As they arrived, Sean ran out to meet them with Igor on her shoulder. She shouted, there's someone locked in the lab and it sounds like they are wrecking it. Who could that be? Rija asked. Another fantastical, I bet, grumbled Freddy. Oh, wait, my motion sensor gadget would have notified me of something sneaking up the mountain. FM tapped him on the shoulder. Well, 
We did detect someone else earlier, remember Freddy? Oh yeah, but why would Uncle Ernst mess up Dad's lab? He asked. Ernst? Victor asked in shock. My brother? Oh no, that's who's up to no good. FM and Freddy were surprised. Wait, our uncle is a bad guy? asked FM. I'm sad to say he is, Victor replied. That's why I don't talk about Ernst. I'm afraid that money is more important to him than family. Sean put her hand in Victor's and said, Family isn't always who you are related to, darling. We've made a wonderful family and filled this palace with love and kindness. That's so true. I'm so proud of how the three of you kids helped each other today. Not because you were a great supernatural action search squad, but because you were great brothers and sister to each other. Now let's go save the lab. Hurry, said Shan. I'll watch over the unicorn while you stop Ernst. Wow, I'm so lucky to have a good-hearted brother, thought Freddy and even a pretty cool big sister. Come on, little brother, let's help Dad stop our evil uncle, said FM. Chapter 8. Evil Uncle Emergency Victor, his kids, and Igor rushed to the locked door. They heard Ernst cackling inside as he grabbed gadgets to steal. It can only be unlocked by the safety controls inside, said the frustrated Victor. He pounded on the door. You'll never get out of there with my inventions, Ernst. Open up! I can just float away with the best inventions using your bubbles, dear brother. Oh no, thought Freddy. He could really get away with that stuff that way. I'll get us in there, vowed FM. He grabbed the handle to pull the door open. He yanked so hard with his monster muscles that he took the whole door off. Ack! shouted Ernst. He panicked at the sight of Victor, Freddy, an angry FM, and the tiger jumping in. So he turned Victor's mega magneto motor on maximum. The magnetic rays caused the metal in FM to send him flying high up to the machine. Clunk. FM was stuck dangling from his forehead. Ernst was delighted until the inventions in his arms also flew from his hands up to the magnet. Oh no, shouted Freddy. His high-tech backpack flew up to the machine with Freddy attached. Hold on, boys. I'll get you down, shouted Victor. Rija and Igor ran to Ernst. He threw a barrel at them. Rija leapt over it, but it exploded with sticky goo when it hit the ground. Gloop. Gooey green stuff covered Igor and Rija landed right in it. Dad, we're stuck to the floor, cried Rija. Eep, shrieked Igor. Victor tried to reach the magnetic controls. That's enough, brother, shouted Victor. Ernst sneered. Oh, I'm not done yet. He threw anything he could find to keep his brother from reaching the controls. Victor had to dodge flying wires, plastic tubes, even a flotation bubble. Helpless and frustrated, Freddy pouted. All of Dad's amazing machines are being ruined, he said. That unicorn really messed things up. We were the ones who sent a stranger to the lab, FM pointed out. Then we rushed off without even telling Dad. It's our fault. But if the unicorn hadn't put us to sleep, then... Hey! Freddy's eyes opened wide. I've got an idea. Chapter 9. A unicorn returns to favor. An excited Freddy asked, Can you get my new radio gadget out of my backpack? FM couldn't see where to reach, since his forehead was still attached to the mega magneto motor. But even dangling up high, he was able to feel around for Freddy's backpack and stick his giant hand in. FM was extra gentle as he carefully pulled out the weird machine. Freddy turned it on and shouted, Now, open your mouth! Once again, the radio signal sent pretty music right from FM's mouth. Victor and Ernst both paused to look up at the music, and a moment later, 
The unicorn gallantly galloped in, even with its injured leg. It was happy to hear the song again. Ernst was so surprised to see a real live unicorn, he forgot to keep throwing stuff. The unicorn reared up with joy, seeing Ernst troublemaking. The unicorn pointed its horn right at him. Aha, said Victor. FM, get ready to land and hold on to your brother. He jumped at the panel and shut down the magnetic machine. FM grabbed Freddy as they fell and Freddy shouted, Everyone get out! right as they landed. FM yanked Rija and Igor out of the goo and carried them out. As Freddy raced out with Victor, he could see sparkles starting to swirl out from the unicorn's horn. Quick! FM, put the door back on! That should keep the sparkles from getting out and putting us to sleep, said Freddy. What kind of weird science is this? Get away, foul beast, shouted Ernst. FM slammed the door back in place. Victor laughed and said, The SASS really saved the day again. It's a good thing we had a fantastical friend to help, FM said. With magical power to save all our science stuff, added Rija. After a while, Rija said, It's probably safe to open the door now. I'll go first, in case the sparkles are still working their magic. Rija crept in to find Ernst snoring and the unicorn guarding over him. Ooh, most of my tech is safe, said Victor. FM helped him put Ernst in a flotation bubble. Just then, the thief started to wake. Victor glared and said, I'm sending you far away, brother. Now all my kids know what a bad guy you are. And now you know how powerful and clever they are. They will never let you steal my inventions. Ernst grumbled as he floated through the open roof. The family watched him float far, far away. It's sad that your brother is your enemy, Dad, said Freddy. Victor nodded quietly. Shan put her hands on FM's and Rija's shoulders and said, that's true, Freddy, but your dad has you and me and Rija and FM. We are more family to him than Ernst. Even little Igor too, said Victor. Wait, where is Igor? I can hear noises from the kitchen, said Rija. They all walked over to see the unicorn in the kitchen. It was eating the family dinner that Sean had made. Igor was riding on its back, throwing food into its mouth. The monkey squeaked with joy at the mess the unicorn made. They all laughed and laughed. Then Victor said, Come on, squad. We have one last mission tonight. Let's figure out how to treat the unicorn's hurt leg. Chapter 10. New Friends The next morning, Victor took Rija, FM and Freddy down the mountain. We should release the unicorn near the place you found it, explained Victor. Because the unicorn will best know how to get home from there, Dad? Rija asked. That's right, Rija. The unicorn's leg looked much better. It was barely limping now, but FM gently guided it so it wouldn't stumble. As they arrived at the school fence, the unicorn nuzzled FM. He said, Aww, this wasn't a monster to be afraid of at all, Freddy. Sometimes fear is worse than any monster, FM, Victor said. And some monsters make for good friends, said Rija. Yeah, I guess you're right, said Freddy. And the unicorn agreed, thanking Freddy by planting another giant lick on his face. Ew, protested Freddy. Rija and FM tried not to giggle. The unicorn trotted off into the wilderness. As it looked back at them, it reared up with joy and just a few happy sparkles swirled from its horn. Rija looked longingly at the school. It would be so fun to go to school with other kids, she said. Victor agreed. A school education with other kids your age could be good for both you and Freddy. But FM would be so lonely without me, Freddy protested. Well, the only reason I can't go is because of all the humans, FM said, but I wouldn't be lonely with mom, dad and Igor at home. Freddy frowned. 
I don't want to spend every day with a bunch of kids I don't know, thought Freddy. He tried to change the subject. Hey, Dad, the first mission of that supernatural action search squad was a big success. Can we please make it a regular extra credit project? pleaded Freddy. I'll do it if we rename it the Fantastical Friend Rescuers, FM said. I want to make it about helping Fantasticals in need. After all, the Yeti was only hungry, Uday was just bored, and the Unicorn was trapped. Yeah, they did all need help, just like me, said Rija. That is a pretty worthy use of your smarts and abilities, Victor stroked his chin. Okay, we'll talk about school later. Freddy and FM shook hands in agreement. Our adventures with Fantasticals are just getting started, Freddy shouted. That's a great name. Could I join? Rija asked shyly. Well, your supernatural powers did come in handy today, Freddy admitted. Sure, you can join. Rija flashed a white smile and FM jumped up and down, making the ground rumble. Victor announced, it's settled. This will be an extra credit project. Get the fantastical friend rescuers going. But in the spring, we're going to talk again about you going to the school, Freddy. Freddy gulped with dread. It's clear that I spent too much time in my lab to properly oversee enough schooling for you and Rija. And the amazing inventions you make prove that you don't need to learn any more from me about science stuff. Freddy was so excited by his dad's pride in his science smarts that he didn't even argue again about school. As they started to head back to the palace, Rija spotted a bright blue package under the tree the girl fell from earlier. Look at that, said Rija. I think it's for you, FM. Open it up. A nervous FM untied the string and opened the wrapping. It's a drawing of me and the girl and the unicorn as friends. She made this for me? FM blushed. High up in another tree, the girl watched them. She was so happy to see FM's giant grin. Hey, big brother, you know what? Asked Freddy. What? You're right, that fantasticals aren't so bad, but some humans make for pretty awesome friends too. I suppose they do, said FM, as he gave Freddy a big monster hug. The end. Did you enjoy the Monster and Me book? Yeah, that was a pretty cool adventure, wasn't it? You can find this and many other books at your local library or check out the description to learn more. You can become a Read Along Book Club member by subscribing to our channel. And if you're allowed, you can hit the bell so you don't miss any future uploads. All right, until next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.